More often than not, criminal gangsters add illegal drug trafficking to their incriminating portfolio, but not in the case of the Vietnamese fashionista To Hong Thai. Poetry, counterfeit watch distribution, and a Vietnamese brotherhood spirit are some of Thai's specific signatures. Surely his main arsenal, the infamous Born to Kill gang of which he was the leader, was instrumental to all of these. Just as smooth as his enduring taste for silk, luxurious and well-fitted wares, he maintained a stable and disreputable status in New York's Chinatown. Here are the fascinating details of To Huang, David Tai's savage life, and his iconic legend. The Early Life of To Huang Tai The legendary To Huang Tai, popularly known by many as An Hai, or David, is an offspring of the tribal Chinese, who was born in Saigon, Vietnam on the 30th of January, 1956. Tai grew up in the Saigon Bedlam as an uneducated boy who started his criminal lifestyle being a go-between, connecting people in need of drugs with those dealing with illegal drugs. A middleman, if you may. But that role came to an abrupt end when his hometown was struck down at the closing stages of the Vietnam War. Fate had other plans for the juvenile Tai, as his father was also seized and convicted by the communists. Still, in 1975, Tai's father somehow managed to use his connections to get him out of the chaos in Saigon. Newbie in the United States Three months later, Tai arrived in the United States with a modification in his Vietnamese given name, David Tai. Perhaps he felt it was a soothing cusp for a fresh start. But was it really? He ended up living as the only Asian in a local church-owned home for boys in Indiana. Barely months after he arrived in the city, he ran away from the plebeian life and jumped on the nearest bus heading for New York City. As a commoner in New York, Tai worked several odd jobs including being a busboy and a dishwasher. He took frequent trips to China and learned how the Chinese make forged merchandise, which he practiced by producing counterfeit watches in his home. A momentary change in life prospects came in 1978, when he enrolled in the prestigious New York University, where he met someone he could relate to, a Vietnamese-born immigrant. Not so long after, the two were engaged in conjugal bliss, which resulted in a pregnancy. Subsequently, they had to leave the school to struggle and to fend for themselves. With his growing family, Tai had to look for a more lucrative source of income, so he began rebranding watches with fake Rolex and Gucci logos, selling his counterfeit watches on Canal Street in Chinatown. This industry, however, was controlled by the Flying Dragons, which were headed by the Hip Sing Tong, a traditional Chinese gang. So Tai had no choice but to join their group in 1983 to keep selling his watches. Tai did not feel welcomed by this gang because he and his fellow Vietnamese brothers were secluded in the dealings of the gang as a result of their ethnic peculiarities. Instead of being welcomed, they were isolated by the larger Flying Dragons group for perilous activities. Displeasing to Tai, he decided to form his own group, the Born to Kill Gang, while working on his counterfeit watch enterprise. His businessman fashion sense can probably be chalked up to his well-known enterprise, which operated within the walls of his very home. In an interview conducted by the television program 48 Hours, Tai averred that his most profitable source of income was the watch enterprise. Tai's past reality as a lone Vietnamese boy was redefined into one of the most famous and historical criminal top dogs, a driven one at that. And nine times out of ten, a driven top dog certainly reeks of trouble wherever he is. New York for sure had their share of Tai's troubles, when the racketeer started his shady business in the city, which was primarily based on the forgery and distribution of watches, which is odd. Well, maybe not entirely, but of course this stands out. With his unique line of watch forgery, he put his peculiarities to work and managed to amass a rapidly booming crime syndicate in the 1980s, an exploit gotten off his drive for Vietnamese-based independence in New York, or so he claims. Born to Kill Gang As the name implies, the Born to Kill Gang consisted of members who were extremely proficient in killing. The gang was formerly called the Canal Street Boys, and it was headed by Tai and coordinated by his deputies, Lan Noc Tran and Lu Hong commonly referred to as the BTK gang. All of the original associates who joined Tai's gang had a similar background to him. They were once adolescents birthed in Vietnam during the anarchist Vietnam War, also called the Second Indochina War, which lasted from 1955 to 1975. And like Tai, they were forced by circumstances into fleeing from their motherland and being placed in foster homes in strange territory. With such an odious backdrop, they became a maverick syndicate channeling their experience of insecurity into threatening and frightening the residents of Canal Street in Chinatown, a street once terrorized by the indisputable Chinese hooligans, Hip Sing Tong. At that time, the main rival of the Born to Kill gang in New York was the Ghost Shadows. Even with a rival gang in place, it did not stop the BTK gang from making millions of dollars and gaining control by forcing inhabitants of the Canal Street into buying Thai's forged watches, delivering weapons, committing contract and random homicides, raiding residences, and tons of other atrocities. Through this short-lived time, 
They did not only catch the attention of the locals, but also that of law enforcement organizations. Just like the Italian syndicates, Ty managed to impose a no-rattling rule on the members of his gang, which bought their silence, and any disloyalty was sure to result in retribution. But it wasn't enough to stop a rattle. The Snitch Tin No, a member of the gang, was teetering between this retribution by the gang and judicial sentencing for being a member of the gang. He made his choice when he decided to become a stool pigeon for the Bureau of Alcohol, Firearms and Tobacco, and snitch on Ty and the Born to Kill gang's activities. He wore a wire underneath his clothing to the group's meetings for six months, ultimately providing the ATF implicating dialogues that served as proof against BTK. Ty and a bunch of other Born to Kill gang members were arrested. Ty was tried, and after denying the charges, he was not just given years' worth of punishment, but a lifelong sentence on the charges of murder, attempted murder, and racketeering, among other crimes. His sentence was issued by a United States federal judge in Brooklyn on October 23, 1992. He was also charged to pay $413,285 as a part of his comeuppance. In the early months of his sentencing, he became a poet, lettering tales of his Vietnam and New York-related experiences from prison. Ty's last crimes before prison. There were a plethora of charges to Ty and the BTK gang name. One in particular made headlines, however, and it was about the death of Ty's deputy at the time, Vin Vu. It was orchestrated by the Chinese godfather of Canal Street, Uncle Benny. This was done after some members of the traditional Chinese gang, Hip Sing Tong, were robbed of their possessions in Chinatown. Uncle Benny made Ty an offer in 1990 to meet with him in a bid to get Ty to reduce his operations on the street, but Ty ignored the offer. Vin Vu's burial was held on the 28th of July, 1990, with a massive attendance of BTK's associates. The burial, however, was interrupted when two men, who Ty believed to be associates of the rival gang, Ghost Shadows, started shooting wildly and eventually injured a few people. The BTK group, however, did not take the interference kindly, as they also shot back violently, and this resulted in much more victims in the scene. The news was publicized in New York for quite a long time following the incident. Another incident that stands out is the murder of the state's witness, Sen Van Ta, who was a merchant on Canal Street of Chinatown. Sen had refused to pay the usual extortion fee to the Born to Kill gang, and this led to a robbery. Subsequently, it resulted in the arrest of some of the gang members and a call by the police to identify the gang members. Sen identified them, after which they were detained but later released. This whole scenario infuriated Tai, considering the fact that he had met on two occasions with Sen physically, to coerce Sen into denying that he had recognized the gang members who were arrested. Ty further threatened Sen with a letter, accompanied with splinters of glass. All of these strategies fell on deaf ears, so Ty allegedly ordered the murder of the jewelry store owner, and this was executed by one of his deputies, Lan Nok Tran, on the 10th of March 1991. Ty was also charged with other crimes, like the intention to bomb a Vietnamese restaurant, Pho Bang, located around the gang's terrain, the conspiracy to rob Sun Moon Trading, the attempted murder of a burglary casualty in Georgia, the WC produce robbery, and the killing of Tuong Pham, the Vietnamese restaurant robbery in Connecticut, among others. A contradicting opinion by Thai. According to Thai, all of these offenses were committed solely as a result of the need for a Vietnamese spirit in the city of New York. He even claimed he had to let go of his marriage to fulfill this so-called need. Thai maintained that his group helped young Vietnamese youths seek a foothold in New York, just like he had, in providing money and safe houses for the members to stay. Renowned writer T.J. English wrote in his iconic book, Born to Kill, that Tai was synonymous to a prince presiding over his chosen people, implying that Tai represented a father figure for his Vietnamese associates as a result of his so-called zeal to provide a great life for the vulnerable Vietnamese in New York. The BTK associates, in turn, offered a servile attitude to Tai in respect for his protective figure for them. Desire to Leave Prison when the global pandemic went to peak in 2020, Ty appealed to the court for a release to his sister's home in Texas. His appeal was to avoid the coronavirus outbreak within the prison, and he also emphasized his poor health condition and the danger of getting the virus. But according to federal prosecutors, this does not decrease his level of danger in New York at large. Conclusion Ty has so far been able to draw the interest of many federal prosecutors who are of the opinion that the panel of adjudicators' ruling has rendered less effective the operations of the Born to Kill mob in Chinatown, New York. Some even maintain that Ty's story will serve as an admonition to the other syndicates. Ty's exploits indeed emphasize his capability to plan and execute acts detrimental to the harmony of the New York society in general. A capability, some would say, is best left confined and collared. 
even with the hope that his sentencing would reduce violent operations in Chinatown. It is still claimed that his gang still lives on under new leaders. With the less than stellar reports of BTK's operations in 2014, it is beyond evident that the gang is not as organized as it was under its founding criminal top dog, David Tai. A well-dressed criminal is certainly not normalcy in the crime world, but that wasn't the only rare thing about the savage life of David Tai, leader of the Born to Kill gang. Well, that's all for today's video. We hope you enjoyed the content as much as we enjoyed bringing it to you. Make sure to like the video and share it with your friends. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more quality content and ring the bell to be notified the instant we drop new videos.